Steve Kosniewski here. I uh, am doing an impromptu live here today. Uh, I wanted to talk about a couple of events that I've been uh, attending over the last three to four weeks. It's uh, October, so it's spooky season, so it's the busiest time of the year. And uh, instead of doing three little mini uh, autopsies, I thought I'd do a bigger one. Um, so, like I said, impromptu, so we'll see if some people come trickling in. Uh, if you are out there and you're seeing this live on Facebook, go ahead and uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, I will answer them live. If you're seeing this later on YouTube or the Across the Board blog or anywhere else that I might feel like um, posting it, you still feel free to leave a comment and I'll just have to answer at some point in the future. Uh, so a little bit of housekeeping, uh, or maybe housekeeping is not the right word, but a little bit of uh, interesting stuff to talk about. We've got a lot of big things going on in October, in addition to the events that I've been attending. Um, so first of all, uh, from French Press, my publishing firm, uh, just yesterday, and as I record this, today's October 24th, um, but just yesterday we went live with the audiobook version of Illusions of Isolation by Brennan LaFaro, uh, which is the second uh, non kosniewski book to come out of French press. Uh, very proud of it, very exciting. Um, getting a lot of buzz. And uh, we found a great audiobook narrator named uh, Marnie Carger, she does an incredible job on this book and you know you can only imagine how hard it is doing a novel or something with a straight storyline uh imagine having to do 13 stories and uh a novelette you see i got it right that time brennan so uh i guess i'll get there in a minute but i actually met up with brennan i guess i've met him before i met him last year but i so i met up with brennan in uh massachusetts his home turf and he said that I guess on one of my previous visit, um, uh, Facebook lives or something like that, I described Red Sands, the concluding story in Illusions of Isolation, as a novella, and it is in fact a novel. That well, Avi, one better, Brennan. I also uh, jokingly called one of your stories uh, "Scratch" because I said it would scratch that itch for you, and it's of course actually called "Snap." So, you know, I'm just a terrible, terrible publisher and terrible marketer, obviously. Anyway, get out there, look up Illusions of Isolations in audiobook form or any form, really. Um, it's available on everywhere that uh, paperbacks are sold. And that's not just something I'm saying. It's, it's out there uh, and now an ebook and audiobook as well. The other big exciting thing um, that just happened literally yesterday was The Thing Under Your Bed, which is my novella. And this is genuinely a novella. It's about 20,000 words. Very short. Um, I've heard a few people say, you know, they sat down and they didn't mean to read the whole thing, but then they did, because uh, hopefully because it's compelling, maybe just because it's short. In any case, uh, this is also available in a couple of different formats now. So this is now available for my good friends, Godless, uh, for 99 cents. So as part of the Godless 31 days of Halloween event, um, October 23rd was the thing under your bed day. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, live, live video folks, live entertainment. Um, so the thing under your bed is on Godless now for a special introductory price of 99 cents. I can't make it that cheap anywhere else uh, right now for various reasons. However, if you have Kindle Unlimited, I also this morning put this up on Kindle Unlimited so it would technically be free. Um, I get paid, so it's like a subscription service. I get paid by the page counts. It's for those of you that aren't you know, big into the whole uh, reading and the literary community it's similar to the way spotify works so any given song that you listen to 
the uh, artist gets a few cents or you know whatever they've negotiated. Um, so in the same case, uh, I get a few cents every time you read the thing under your bed uh, or get further in it, I should say. Um, if you didn't know that, the best thing you can do is download it, skip to the end, go back later and, and decide whether you want to read it or not. But there's also been a lot of chicanery with that. So over the years, um, like authors were doing, authors and publishers were doing things like they would put, so the table of contents for books on Kindle are hyperlinks. So they'd make the first hyperlink skip you a few hundred pages ahead. So now you've just made like a dollar or two just from somebody like trying to get to the first chapter. But Amazon has really um, clamped down a lot of that nonsense. In any case, I've never had any books on KU, and what motivated me to do this was um, I actually have my most recent anthology, well, my first anthology ever that, that I've edited, um, The Perfectly Fine Neighborhood. I put that on KU uh, just as kind of an experiment. The experiment is going very well, so I thought I would do a similar experiment with The Thing Under Your Bed and see how that goes, um, because I found out one of my marketing tools that I usually employ is uh, BookBub. And I found out that BookBub will not accept a novella. It needs to be a minimum of 150 pages. So sorry to all you fans on Kobo, Barnes & Noble, and that sort of thing, but I took the thing under your bed down from those other places so it could be a Kindle exclusive, which is a prerequisite for getting on to Kindle Unlimited. So that's more than anybody ever wanted to know about any of that stuff. Uh, but what it boils down to is Illusions of Isolation in audiobook, Thing Under Your Bed on Godless, and both, of course, available everywhere else. Um, so yeah, pretty exciting stuff. Um, but what I really wanted to talk about was a couple of events that I've done this month. I did a couple of new events. I also did one that I, my second time, uh, which all three went very well. Um, so the first event that I did for Halloween, for spooky season, was a Horror at the Library. And this was an event that took place at the Ephrata Public Library here in Ephrata, uh, Pennsylvania. Um, now, I have not been to Ephrata, even though it's probably only about an hour from where I live now, maybe an hour and a half from where I grew up. Uh, but I went to school very close to Ephrata uh, in Millersville, and uh, I studied German. And there is a German cloister. I mean, it's defunct now, but it's like a historical site called the Ephrata Cloister. It's a, a, a monastery. Uh, where famously the monks, uh, they were ascetics, so they slept, instead of with pillows, they would use wooden blocks. Um, so we went to Ephrata um, when I was in college, um, and I'm not sure that I've been back. I, I don't think I've had cause to go back, but it's a nice little town. Um, yeah, I don't think I've been back, so that would have been like 2002, 2003, and uh, I got back now almost 20 years later, for an event at the library. Uh, so that event was with, uh, you know, some of my good friends and uh, also new to me friends. But uh, I was there with Brian Keane, Mary San Giovanni, Wesley Southerd, Summer Cannon, and Paul Melnicek. Now, I have not met Paul before, but or I had not met Paul before, but he was apparently the one that organized this event um, or rather, I should say, he the, the librarians, the Ephrata folks, uh, organized the event. Paul asked them to put it together. So we all owe quite a debt to Paul. Um, but I was very glad to be invited to this event. Um, and I wasn't sure what to expect. Um, I haven't done too many library events in the past. And I know my partner often yells at me and tells me I need to start doing them. And, and, and I intend to. I just... Uh, you know, there's always a thousand things going on. So like, oh yeah, reach out and start cold calling librarians is, is a tricky one to keep at the top of my head. You know, when I'm busy putting together audiobooks and talking to Drew Stepick at Godless and, and everything else to get these sorts of things together. In any case, um, it was a really cool event. 
Uh, so I was really glad I haven't seen Summer in a while. Um, I probably have not seen Brian and Mary since they got married. They got married to each other in um, May or June. And uh, Wesley Southern, I, I see pretty consistently. Um, so, yeah, I must have, I've probably seen him a couple times since then. But it was really cool um, to have a nice little reunion with some folks that I haven't seen in a while. Yeah, I'm really not sure when I would have seen Summer last. So it was really cool to get to see some old friends and new. Um, so I will admit I was really worried when I first walked into the event um there was nobody there there was just uh two kids and they were summer's kids I, I didn't realize that at first but then i was like oh it's gonna be one of these which uh if you're an author uh it happens i have been to so many readings I, i've sometimes said in a joking manner but it's true uh the only thing worse than having nobody a reading is having one person at a reading because when nobody's there, you can just pack up and leave. But when there's that one person there, they, you need to give them the whole show. And hopefully it pans out. Um, but yeah, I, I've even done readings where there were two authors and one audience member. So, uh, you know, there's the thing they tell kids, which is that it gets better. But there's something they should tell authors, which is that it could always be worse. Uh, so I was a little bit worried that it was going to be one of those kinds of events. Um, but then I was pleasantly surprised because I got there maybe 5.30. And by 5 to 6, before the event started, um, we had a good, solid, packed-in audience. So I guess folks were just, you know, getting home from work and, and you know, Getting the, getting the kids packed up and, and uh, everything else. But folks came out and they, and they really started pouring in. So it was really nice. The way that um, the Effort of Library folks had it set up was in the, they had like this multi-purpose room. And in the back was all of our tables set up for selling. And then in the front was a couple of tables set up with microphones and uh, nameplates and, you know, water bottles and everything. That was another really cool thing hospitality I, I love when um, event organizers think about stuff like they give you water bottles they give you um hand sanitizer and, and uh you know sometimes swag like i have a bunch of stickers and stuff that the that the library kindly you know put together for us so around about six o'clock uh we all headed for the front of the room and we just we had a panel quote unquote uh, i mean i'm sure there was a topic to the panel i was probably like horror writing in 2023 or something um but as tends to happen with events like that we just basically did a q a and went down the line and, and introduced ourselves and everything um so i got to talk about uh somebody made the mistake of asking what are you guys watching on tv right now so uh you know i got to talk about my television addiction um immediately brightened up and uh uh, I was, somebody mentioned, um, what's it called? Not Dark Shadows, the, the vampire show on uh, FX, um, What We Do in the Shadows. So somebody mentioned that, that they were watching that. I think it was Mary San Giovanni. And uh, then when they were asking me what I was watching, they asked, oh, I, I mentioned that I watched the Sunday Night Cartoons, you know, which is kind of my anchor for the week. Uh, in case you can't tell from the author of, you know, Billy and the Clonosaurus. I love The Simpsons and I love Family Guy and all that stuff. And there's a new show, which is Kripopolis. Um, You know, I've been watching it. I don't have any strong opinions one way or the other yet. Um, uh, and so they mentioned that Matt Berry was in it. So I got to do my best Matt Berry in impersonation, which that was not it. But um, I know he started doing audiobooks, So... Matt, if you are interested in doing the thing out of your bed or anything that I uh, have released, um, that is, you know, that is right for you. I'm sure it costs 50,000 pounds or something to secure to secure uh, somebody like that. But it would still be amazing <laughs> to get an audiobook from him. Um, so, we, you know, we talked about writing horror, you know, what we're watching on TV. Yeah 
all kinds of stuff. It was a fun time. It was, you know, an intimate time. I always prefer, you know, whenever I do panels like that, I always prefer to talk to the audience and have a QA and a and this and that. Um, and then, yeah, right around 7, 7.15, the librarian said, hey, we all turned into pumpkins at 8, so let's head back. And then there's, again, that question of, you know, well, okay, the panel went really well. How are sales going to be? And uh, let me tell you, Ephrata, anytime you want me to come back, I will be back to your beautiful town. Um, that was quite an audience for book selling. Um, I sold a lot, a lot of books that night in 45 minutes. And that's what you want to do. That's, you want to pack it all in. Um, so, hey, new viewers. Thanks for joining me. Oh, wow, lots of new viewers. This is the time to do it. Not at noon on a Saturday. I learned that from the uh, House on the Borderland live that I did. Um, but hey, guys, if you have any questions or comments, put them in the feed and I will get to them. Um, so anyway, that was horror at the library. And then we all headed out. Actually, funny enough, um, I said I went to school in Millersville. And uh, the place that I used to frequent uh, for Sunday breakfast or just kind of any time of the night breakfast when we, when we got our drunk on in uh, college was a place called the Linden Diner in uh, I guess it's probably considered Lancaster and we all went out there and uh, had dinner um, so that was really cool you know getting to catch up with like I said some old friends people I hadn't seen in a while and uh, you know some of the audience members and that kind of thing too so yeah horror at the library was definitely a blast um i hope they have it again and i also uh definitely need to start looking into some local uh library stuff um so if any librarians are watching go ahead and reach out to me or i will try and reach out to you hello steve says wesley souther hello wesley Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so, the next event that I had, speaking of Wesley Southern, was uh, the Merrimack Valley Halloween Book Festival. So, Horror at the Library was Thursday, October 5th. So, I guess a full week passed. And then on Friday the 13th, that's right. Yeah, I had forgotten that it was Friday the 13th. Um, Wes and I packed into the car and headed up to Haverhill, uh, Massachusetts. So the technical, and I'm only going to say it once, the technical term is Merrimack Valley Halloween Book Festival. Um, and I'll probably just refer to it as Haverhill or Merrimack uh, going forward because um, I can't even remember the abbreviation MVHB. Uh, yeah, that's too much. MVHBF. I'm it's great for writing but not so much for saying so um wes and i piled into the car and it's about probably just short of an eight hour drive from where i live to uh haverhill massachusetts and the event was entirely on saturday the 14th and we headed up on uh friday the 13th um, and Wes had mentioned maybe stopping at uh, Spooky Hollow with New York, which is on the way, and maybe stopping at Salem Mass, which is, I want to say, not exactly on the way, but, you know, when you're going to Massachusetts, it's not so far out of the way. But um, just too much. It was, it's just too much. And... Salem apparently at this time of year is a fucking nightmare. Um, so you like the, we would have spent an hour getting there and an hour getting to Haverhill from there and then probably three hours trying to find a parking space and I don't know. It's not like we were even gonna see any witches or anything. I was making the joke to my partner later on. I was like, like what's preserved? I don't even know. Like are they gonna be like, well, this is the Wawa or it's New England, so this is the Dunkin' Donuts where Goody Bad Wife was hanged when it used to be a courthouse. Like, I don't know. I don't know what's in Salem, Mass. But um, yeah, maybe another time. But the interesting thing is when we got to Haverhill, I met a couple of folks that were from Salem. 
So they said what you want to do is go in September. And if you go towards the end of September, the tourists aren't really there yet, but they're all set up for the, all the Halloween stuff. So you get basically the full experience that you would get in Salem if you go in the end of September. So maybe that'll be, well, I think maybe we'll try and plan that out for another year, if not necessarily next year. Um, so we made it up to Haverhill. Um, and yeah, Friday night we went to like a, uh, what was it called? Moose and bull moose, bull and moose or something. It was like a media store, like a, uh, record store essentially, but it had a ton of books and, you know, Warhammer, which always catches my eye and, uh, DVDs and all that kind of thing. Um, so we went through there for a while. Hey, new, uh, viewers. The way that I'm doing this right now, I can't see the names of the individual viewers, but maybe that's good because I can't call you out. But uh, hey, if you have any comments or anything or questions, leave them in the comment thread and I will do it live. Or if you're watching this later on YouTube, leave it in the comments and I will answer it. Not live. Um, so we just hung out uh, Friday night. And then Saturday, the event started at, I want to say, 10 a.m. So we kind of packed up the car with all our books and headed over at, like, 9 a.m. So this is a really cool event. Um, the, the uh, whatever it's called, Merrimack, the Haverhill, the thing in Haverhill. Um, it's a really cool event. So uh, Eric LaRocco was here this year. Uh, Christopher Triana. Um... Like I said, Brennan LaFaro was there, so we actually got to hang out and chat a little bit. Uh, John Durgan was there. And uh, so what happened was last year, I got to go to Haverhill for the first time. So I only got a half table. So I got a half table for a half day because um, it was kind of like, hey, we're, we're kind of doing you a favor. So lots of people are on the list. So we're, we're giving you like the best we can give you. You know, so I had a table partner for the whole time and that half table for half day eventually turned into a half table for a full day last year. I guess somebody dropped out. So I spent the first half and I apologize. I, I can look it up. I, I can't remember the name of my first table partner. She was very sweet. But then my second table partner was uh, John Durgan last year. And I got to meet him for the first time. We got to chat. I guess I must have made a good impression because um, he was really happy to see me this year. Uh, me and Wes hung out. We had dinner with him. Um, I guess Brennan had to head off. Um, he, you know, he does have a family and he lives up there. That was kind of the funny thing was uh, we saw Glenn Rolf. Uh, you know, there were a lot of the locals, the Mainers and Massachusettsians, Massachusettsians whatever they call themselves, the New Englanders, the, the donkeys. Uh, yeah, we also learned that apparently Dunkin' Donuts and uh, Subway are both from Connecticut. So that's why apparently the only place you can stop on your drive from Pennsylvania to Haverhill is Dunkin' Donuts or Subway. Uh, so unfortunately, we had to eat some delicious Subway sawdust sandwiches. Um, so yeah, a lot of the local authors, unfortunately, didn't hang around after the event because they had to get back to their families and stuff, which, you know, that's what happens when you're the locals. Um, so, uh, we, we had the, um, event, lots of sales. It's always really good sales at that Mary Mac. They do a really good show. I think they said that they had about 1300 people. And I mean, this is in a library for, you know, Pete's sake. So having 1,300 people um, stop by was amazing. Um, and, you know, a lot of them stopped by, you know, to see me, get some signatures, uh, get some thing under your beds, everything else. I know Brennan did really well. Uh, I'm sure Durgan did smashingly. And Wesley did really well as well. Um, which, you know, is not the measure of all things, but... Uh, you know, it really makes us happy when we get to meet new fans and 
I had also received, uh, so the other thing that is coming up that I'm going to be participating in is the uh, Pirate Box from Indie Horror Boxes, um, which if you head over to Etsy and look up the Indie Horror Boxes uh, web store, grab a copy of the Pirate Box because I am going to be in that. But anyway, Tiffany Copland, who is organizing, who's the owner of Indie Horror Boxes, sent me a big pile of... Um, swag from uh, books of horror um uh, so i got to hang it hand out a bunch of uh you know bookmarks and apparently some stuff that was supposed to be uh a present presence for me but uh yeah it's whatever i didn't really distinguish i just got a, a box of swag so i put it on my table and handed it out to folks um so it was really great to meet people um give them bookmarks, give them books and audio books and everything else. Um, so the whole event was really cool. They had a couple of um, panels. Uh, I was not on any panels this year. Um, I'm always happy to do them. But you also have that kind of that thing where you're like, yeah, but now I'm leaving my table for an hour and I'm missing out on getting to meet the public and the people that wanted to get their stuff signed. And, you know, it's hard to say. Oh, I also got to meet Francois Viancourt. And I was so starstruck, um, I didn't even, I couldn't even get any French out of my mouth uh, when I met Francois. So, uh, désolé, Francois, if you end up watching this. But apparently, uh, he came down from Montreal and got turned around a couple times at the border because he didn't have a visa for selling um, artwork. So, Francois, if you guys don't know, is uh, a, an artist and he's done well he did the cover for the limited edition release of brain eater jones which is coming from thunderstorm books uh any day now i think uh same thing he did limited edition release of hematophages and limited edition release of ghoul archipelago and he's also done a ton of work for like stephen king and uh, just uh, fucking everybody amazing artist but tried to apparently break the law and bring some of his art prints uh south of the border into um Haverhill Massachusetts and got turned back which really sucks um so sorry to hear about that story Francois but hey at least you got a story you know so uh oh do I, I have four comments why am I not seeing my comments hang on a second Whoever's commenting, sorry, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just not seeing them. All right, well, we'll uh, get back to that in a second here. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Wesley says the correct term for people from Massachusetts is mass holes. Uh, all right. Um, Kaylee Dobbs says the word donut summoned me. Oh, so you're like uh, Homer in the uh, uh, Treehouse of Horror number four, I think, which I'll be trying to watch uh, probably later tonight. Oh, and Brownsville Scream says, let me have it so I can improve next year, about a minute ago. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, definitely Brownsville Screams. Uh, so let's, let's move on and talk to her. Uh, anyway, so uh, Haverhill. Um, we, uh, oh yeah, so then we went out and had dinner with John Durgan, got to meet up with, uh, Sadie Hartman, you know, tons of other folks. I feel bad, I feel bad when I do these things that I don't like name dropping, but I also feel bad if I don't mention your name, and we had a really cool experience, and, you know, like this, uh, it's very easy when it's like, fans and, and family members and that kind of thing because you people are not public and I, I don't want to I mean I might say like I hung out with Wesley Southern's wife or something but I don't want to make public spectacles of people that have not agreed to be public um, but when it's people that are trying to you know be public uh, I feel bad not mentioning you so uh, just I apologize um, if I didn't mention you, I, I'm not like, I don't, I also don't make a list and say every person that I interacted with at an event. So sorry about that. Um, oh, we have a fifth comment. 
or do we? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay, that was round twelve squiggles. Okay. Um. So we had dinner at a place called the Loft in Haverhill, and then on Sunday we headed back, and again weren't going to stop in Salem, weren't going to stop in Spooky Hollow uh, or anything. At that point, we just wanted to get the fuck home. And I'm sure, you know, Wes wanted to go back and see his family. And I wanted to see my partner and, and everything else. So that was really great event. That was the uh, uh, October 14th. So one week later, another Saturday event, another library event, Brownsville Screams. So, like I said, as far as I can tell, Horror at the Library was its first year. Because I, I think that Paul Melnicek, who was pushing for it, um, said that uh, he had been trying to get it together for a while. Um, so, it seemed like that was the first year. Um, now, I know Brownsville Screams, this was also their first year. Um and I see that they're watching us and have asked me to let me have it. But I, there's not that much to, to let you have there, uh, folks. Um, so I was inv invited to this event. Um, this is another library event. So again, you know, support your local library. They do this really cool stuff. Uh, this one was a little bit different. So Mary Mac was indoors inside the library. Um, her, her, oh. That's right, all three were at the libraries, weren't they? Horror at the library was indoors in the multi-purpose room in the library in Ephrata. And then Brownsville Screams was like a street fair um, that was uh, organized and overseen by the library. So that was just this past weekend. So today's Tuesday. So we got the invite from the organizers. And... Uh, really cool thing uh, all we really had to do was get ourselves there so they covered our tables and they covered our hotel rooms so we had, there was actually an Airbnb that we were staying at I say hotel you know what I mean lodging um, so there was an Airbnb there that was called the uh, Maria's lovers house which seems like an odd name for an Airbnb and it is but I'll tell you what the deal was there was a movie in the 80s called Maria's Lovers, uh, starring Robert Mitchum, Natasha Kinski, a couple of uh, famous people from the 80s. More like the 60s, but you know, you know what I mean. They were, I'm sure they were, their fame held over until 1981 or whatever. Uh, so that movie was filmed at this building in Brownsville, PA, uh, which has since been converted into a B&B or possibly just an airbnb so it's this really cool house um and it's got all the posters from the movie and it's set up like it's 1940 so i haven't watched it yet I, i'll go back and watch it at some point i guess it took place during world war ii so this house is set up i mean they have you know a modern tvs and they have wi-fi and that kind of stuff but just to look at it you know like they have an old radio and they have you know a world war ii um soldiers uniform and stuff like that uh so it's set up like you're supposed to feel like you're in the 40s when you come in so um this event uh who all was there oh uh our good friend uh candace nola was there mary san giovanni again uh john urban sick jeremy mcgargy uh sheldon higdon who i have not met before i met him at this event so again new folks uh, Michael West, I also have not met before. Wesley Southern again. Mike Lombardo. And um, I think that's it. There was somebody else who I did not catch her name, but so sorry. I think correct. Let me know in the comments what your name was. <laughs> but everybody, yeah. Um, really great uh, panel of authors. So, I say panel. It wasn't really a panel. I just made a great slate of authors. So, we, um, uh, Brownsville Scream says Sarah Hayes. Okay. So, Sarah Hayes was the other, um, person that was there. 
So I headed up there with Urban Sick and San Giovanni. And it was actually around 3 p.m. So this event was kind of like an evening event. So it was like 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. About a three-hour drive from where I am. It's just south of Pittsburgh. Um, you can tell when you're coming in because of all the fucking fries on the sandwiches that people eat for some reason out there. Um, so Saturday morning, we all piled into John Urban Six car and uh, headed out uh, to Pittsburgh, basically, Brownsville. Um, we got there, so we went to the Maria's lover's house and checked in and, well, didn't check in. You know, there wasn't like a guy. Uh, we, like, threw our bags in. Um, and then we went down to the Brownsville Town Center. It was called, like, Snowden Square, I think. Um, and they were setting up, so, like I said, it was more like a street fair than a, um, indoor event or anything. So they had, like, an empanada truck and, uh, you know, the library was selling hot dogs and, and soda pop as they call it out there um and you know there were like vendor like with vendors with the like uh you know creepy candles and, and what have you and then we were kind of like the centerpiece so there was like the author's row was kind of like the centerpiece and then they had a bunch of punk rock bands or maybe it was heavy metal i don't know Wes can let me in i don't know anything about music um, but they had a really cool lineup of bands. Um, so we kicked it off at three and the lights were still high. Um, and it was just kind of a community event. Um, so, uh, you know, folks came down to the town square, looked around, saw what was going on. It was just like a couple of streets were blocked off. I guess it was really kind of in a uh driveway or something maybe it was the uh library parking lot i'm not really sure but it was just you know kind of like a street fair the bands were playing music um we got to meet a lot of folks uh it was really cool i met one guy who was like you know i'm a huge fan of clickers uh, of course i've read your clickers book already but i gotta buy it from you you know so that i actually have a copy because i have copies of all the others I was like, that's really cool. It's always cool when you meet somebody that's already a fan. Because pretty much whenever I meet folks at events like this, I'm like, let me pitch myself. Here I am, a dancing monkey for your amusement. Um, so it's really cool to have some built-in fans already. Um, and uh, the organizers also had a, uh, a, a king and a queen, like as though it were the prom. Uh, so we all contributed books, and I saw that the queen was, uh, or I guess it was a king or a queen. So I saw that the queen was crowned uh, with her flesh, uh, flesh and bone crown uh, earlier today, or, or I guess it was actually on Saturday she found out and got a big, uh, great big swag uh, bag full of books and everything else to go with it. Um, so that was a really cool event. Um, got to hang out with Candace um we stood in line waiting for coffee for kind of a while uh but it was cool because i don't get to talk to candace very much um and she's a really cool person um candace nola uh who was also featured in the perfectly fine neighborhood which is available on kindle unlimited um so yeah and, and i got signatures from candace so I now am probably, I am, in fact, I can guarantee, because I know how many I've signed, but I know I am now in possession, the only person in the world in possession of the Perfectly Fine Neighborhood with four signatures from four contributors on it. I think the hard one is going to be uh, Miss Dobbs there. Well, no, she won't be the hardest. The hardest will be Ryan Bread Inc., unless I get out to Australia sometime. But uh, I may... I should probably hang on to some of these and, and try and get them out to the UK uh, one of these days. I don't know if we'll be able to run down uh, Annie Knox and uh, who was our other UK contributor, DC Hill. Try and run all of them down. Maybe, maybe maybe I'll get mine to 100%, but 
it's going to be a while, I guarantee you. So, uh, yeah, Brownsville Screams was really cool. Um, first year con, or uh, street fair, I should say. Um, we had a sixth comment. Or is that six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I can't count very well. Sorry, I have to keep hitting refresh on the comments to make sure that I'm caught up. Um, so, yeah, that was a really cool event. So, so far, and I can't believe I didn't think of this in the beginning, but three library events in October, all were really cool, great sales. Um, okay, Brownsville said it, Brownsville Scream says, mine is signed by you, Brian, Candace, and one other. Yes. Me, Brian, Candace, and one other. Yeah. Okay, so you're the other person. You, Or I guess anybody that went to Brownsville Screams has the quadruple signed ones. But I still have a couple in my car. Um, so, yeah, three really cool events, all hosted by libraries. I don't know why I didn't put that together. I should have. Sorry, guys, I'm really burned out from spooky season already this year. And it's really just starting. So... The next couple of things that are going to be coming up, I do have more events this year somehow. Um, the next event is going to be Halloween Hangover, which is going to be at the Barnes & Nobles in Libby Place in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, and that's going to be Friday and Saturday, November 3rd to 4th. Killer lineup. Um, Jess McHugh... Uh, Brian Keen, uh, me, Wes, uh, just a ton of people. Um, and then, so that'll be a live event. Um, that should be really cool. So make sure you come out for that if you are in the Richmond, Virginia area. The other really cool thing that's going to be that Sunday, so that's going to be a great big packed up um, weekend for me there. So on Guy Fawkes Day, on Sunday, November 5th, at Love Drafts Brewing Company in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, is going to be the Gulastic Book Festival. Is that what it's called? Gulastic Book Fair, sorry. So Gulastic Book Fair is a little bit different. It's not a street fair, it's not a convention, no panels. It is like the old Scholastic Book Fairs from when you were a kid if you are of a certain age, um, where all of the authors just have their books out on tables, and then you can walk by and peruse at your leisure and not be hassled by the guys going, buy my book, buy my book. So um, we will also be there. This is another one that is my second year doing this, along with um, Haverhill, Mary Mac. Uh, last year, I was shocked at how many people bought my book. I was shocked at how many people did not want to meet me afterwards. Uh, I assume people want the whole song and dance and the signature and the uh, grinder with the monkey thing. But people at this event, they just want to show up. They just want to look at the books, buy the books, walk off, not be hassled by a bunch of asshole authors. So if that's your thing, Come to Mechanicsburg on the 5th of November. Remember, remember, the 5th of November. Um, so that'll be a really cool event. And I'm trying to think who all is there that I didn't mention already. Uh, Richard Poff will be there. Matt Wilson, Robert Swartwood, good friend. Um, all good friends, except I don't really know. Uh, uh, I don't really know Richard Poff. Uh, I've met him. But, uh, yeah, Wilderson Swartwood. Um, sorry, I'm going to go crazy if I try and remember all of these names off the top of my head. So just look these events up. Rest assured, if nobody else of import will be there, I will certainly be there. And I can sign your books or not. Uh, whatever floats your boat. But, anyway, thanks, everybody. Thank you to the organizers of Brownsville Screams, uh, Merrimack Valley Halloween Book Festival, and uh horror at the library at the effort of library and uh i will catch you guys on the flip well let me ch all right let me check and see are there any other comments no more comments okay sounds good 
Thanks, everybody, and we'll catch you next time.